Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we have one of those interesting times when two pieces of seemingly unrelated news might actually be telling part of the same story. On the one hand, we have Meta's chief AI scientist, Jan LeCun, reportedly leaving Meta and launching his own company. And on the other hand, we have a new essay from Dr. Fei-Fei Li, all about world models and spatial intelligence. At the root of both of these stories is a question about whether the right path to the next generation of advanced AI is via large language models, or if indeed there is a different approach. Let's talk first, though, about Jan LeCun leaving Meta. This is something of the end of an era. LeCun has served as Meta's chief AI scientist since 2013. In other words, long before anyone was trying to catch up to ChatGPT, even before there was an open AI bombing around the valley thinking about the future of artificial intelligence. LeCun drove the development of Meta's early llama models through his leadership at Meta's Fundamental AI Research, or FAIR, lab. LeCun is a highly decorated AI scientist, having won a Turing Award in 2018 for pioneering work done in the 1990s and 2000s. And yet for many, the writing for this was on the wall as soon as Zuckerberg began his hiring spree over the summer to establish Meta's Superintelligence Division and TBD Labs, and especially since he bought a big chunk of scale in order to recruit 28-year-old Alexander Wang to run the new initiative. Now, in all these moves, LeCun's Fair Lab did continue to exist, but it was rolled up within the new division led by Alexander Wang. Now, as part of the move, Wang became the chief AI officer, while former OpenAI lead scientist Sheng Jia Zhao became chief scientist for Superintelligence Labs. At the time, LeCun reaffirmed his role at the company publicly, writing, My role as chief scientist for FAIR has always been focused on long-term AI research and building the next AI paradigms. My role and FAIR's mission are unchanged. In other words, the party line at the time was that LeCun had always been concerned about longer-term building rather than immediate-term initiatives, and this didn't change that. And yet, rumors swirled of resources and personnel being drained from FAIR, as well as a broader shift away from pure research towards AI that could be commercialized. For some commentators, this is just the latest in a string of personnel issues surrounding Meta's AI. Didi Das of Menlo Ventures writes, Meta's AI org is in disarray. First, Sumitra Chinchala, the inventor of PyTorch, leaves. Now, Jan LeCun, their AI head, leaves. They have $600 billion in compute commits until 2028, but I guess it's up to Alex Wang and Nat Friedman to deliver. Computer science professor Pedro Domingos noted that the news wiped $30 billion off of Meta's market cap, approximately twice of what they paid to get Alexander Wang. Andrew Orlowski of the Daily Telegraph posted, Zuck basically hired Zhang Yang, the hot dog not hot dog guy from Silicon Valley, and made LeCun report to him. I'm surprised he took so long to bail. But very underreported, Zuck hasn't a clue what he's doing. Yet that was far from the only take. For some, this still feels like the natural fallout of adjustments in personnel when the stakes are this large. Jordan Thibodeau, formerly of Google and Slack, responded to Didi Das saying, bro, come on, you've been around the block. Anytime a regime change happens, reorgs and exits happen. You got to give the story time to bake before jumping to conclusions. Of course the old regime is leaving. They did well during the status quo, but now it's all hands on deck and Facebook is under wartime and not many in the AI community are up for that. Others basically just thought that it was probably time to rip the Band-Aid. LeCun has not only been away from day-to-day -day duties for a while, he's been vocally against LLMs as a stepping stone towards AGI. You might remember that big Wall Street Journal piece from about a year ago, where he very famously said that current AIs were dumber than a cat. Brasser X writes, Jan LeCun leaving Meta is significant and probably overdue. He's a foundational figure in AI, but his research-first mindset often put Meta out of sync with the pace of the current landscape. While competitors pushed aggressively towards large-scale, product-ready models, Meta spent years debating theory. With LeCun moving on, Meta now has room to align its AI strategy with reality rather than philosophy. Less nostalgia, more execution. Others thought, honestly, as smart as LeCun is, that he just hasn't been the asset that he needed him to be when it came to Meta competing in the AI race. John Hernandez writes, We all saw this coming, didn't we? First, if you're a big name on AI, anything you do will raise several billion overnight. Hard to get that much money on a salary. Second, if you are a legend and they make your report to a kid that could be your grandson, no matter how good he is, you won't feel appreciated. But truth be told, he hasn't helped Meta much on the AI race, so it's a win-win. Jeffrey Emanuel writes, Jan LeCun is better off working in a Bell Labs or Xerox Park setting where things are measured in decades and there's no expectation or pressure to deliver anything commercially useful in the short or even medium term. Meta is way past that now, given their AI capital spending. The point that Jeffrey's making is that Zuckerberg is betting the farm on a huge infrastructure build-out 
and that's going to force them to live in the real world of what they can deliver right now. Emmanuel continues, I get the sense that he doesn't care enough about winning in the marketplace or about products to make a compelling startup now given the intense level of competition. Also, LLMs are the tech we have now, and he doesn't believe in them long term. Startups need to move fast. I think John's note, however, that if you have one of those big names, you can raise a ton of money very quickly, is well taken. A cynical take on this is that by starting his own new lab, Lacoon is basically locking in a two or three billion dollar hiring bonus when eventually that lab gets bought by Google DeepMind. And that might especially be the case if his interest in world models really starts to bear fruit. Now, even within Meta's Fair Lab, Lacoon and his team have taken some steps towards working on that, but the Financial Times piece suggests that he's going to go much farther with this new startup effort. They write, Within Fair, Lacoon has instead focused on developing an entirely new generation of AI systems that he hopes will power machines with human-level intelligence, known as world models. These systems aim to understand the physical world by learning from videos and spatial data rather than just language. Lacoon has said it could take a decade to fully develop the architecture. Lacoon's next endeavor is focused on furthering his work on world models according to two people familiar with the matter. Which brings us to our second companion story, which is not so much a story as this essay and accompanying Twitter post from Feifei Li. On X, she writes, AI's next frontier is spatial intelligence, a technology that will turn seeing into reason, perception into action, and imagination into creation. The essay she released is called From Words to Worlds, Spatial Intelligence is AI's Next Frontier. In it, she calls large language models wordsmiths in the dark, eloquent but inexperienced, knowledgeable but ungrounded. Instead, she says, quote, Spatial intelligence will transform how we create and interact with real and virtual worlds, revolutionizing storytelling, creativity, robotics, scientific discovery, and beyond. This, she says, is AI's next frontier. So what does she mean by spatial intelligence? Now, first of all, it should be noted that whereas Lacoon is rather dismissive of LLMs, Fifi Lee is less so. She writes, it's no longer a question of whether AI will change the world. By any reasonable definition, it already has. Yet, she points out, many of the big dreams and visions that we have for AI lie outside of our reach. For example, she says, the dream of massively accelerated research in fields like disease curation, new material discovery, and particle physics remains largely unfulfilled. And the promise of AI that truly understands and empowers human creators remains beyond reach. She writes, to learn why these capabilities remain elusive, we need to examine how spatial intelligence evolved and how it shapes our understanding of the world. Going back to the history of evolution, she suggests that long before we could communicate with language, the, quote, simple act of sensing quietly sparked an evolutionary journey toward intelligence. She continues, the seemingly isolated ability to glean information from the external world, whether a glimmer of light or the feeling of texture, created a bridge between perception and survival that only grew stronger and more elaborate as the generations passed. Layer upon layer of neurons grew from that bridge, forming nervous systems that interpret the world and coordinate interactions between an organism and its surroundings. Thus, many scientists have conjectured that perception and action became the core loop driving the evolution of intelligence, and the foundation on which nature created our species. She goes on to point out all of the various ways in which spatial intelligence impact our everyday lives, but points out that it's not just functional but also at the root of our creativity. Ultimately, she writes, spatial intelligence is the scaffolding upon which our cognition is built. It's at work when we passively observe or actively seek to create. It drives our reasoning and planning even on the most abstract topics. And it's essential to the way we interact, verbally or physically, with our peers or with the environment itself. Unfortunately, today's AI doesn't think like this yet. Now you might be thinking, what then about multimodal LLMs? She writes that while they've had some progress, there are still real limitations. Multimodal LLMs, she writes, trained with voluminous multimedia data in addition to textual data, have introduced some basics of spatial awareness. Today's AI can analyze pictures, answer questions about them, and generate hyper-realistic images and short videos. Yet the candid truth is that AI's spatial capabilities remain far from human level, and the limits reveal themselves quickly. State-of-the-art MLLM models rarely perform better than chance on estimating distance, orientation, and size, or mentally rotating objects by regenerating them from new angles. They can't navigate mazes, recognize shortcuts, or predict basic physics. AI-generated videos, nascent and yes, very cool, often lose coherence after a few seconds. And ultimately, while this doesn't make LLMs not useful for the use cases that they're useful for, Lee argues that there is a whole world of use cases that are just outside of AI's capabilities. She provides, then, three essential capabilities that will define world models. The first is generative. World models can generate worlds with perceptual, geometrical, and physical consistency. She writes, world models must be capable of spawning endlessly varied and diverse simulated worlds that follow semantic or perceptual instructions while remaining geometrically, physically, and dynamically consistent. Next is multimodal. 
world models being multimodal by design. She writes, just as animals and humans do, a world model should be able to process inputs, known as prompts in the generative AI realm, in a wide range of forms. Given partial information, whether images, videos, depth maps, text, instructions, gestures, or actions, world models should predict or generate world states as complete as possible. Third and finally is interactive. World models can output the next states based on input actions. Finally, she says if actions and or goals are part of the prompts to a world model, its outputs must include the next state of the world, represented either implicitly or explicitly. Together, she says the scope of this challenge exceeds anything AI has faced before. While language is a purely generative phenomenon of human cognition, worlds play by much more complex rules. Here on Earth, gravity governs motion, atomic structures determine how light produces colors and brightness, and countless physical laws constrain every interaction. Even the most fanciful creative worlds are composed of spatial objects and agents that obey the physical laws and dynamic behaviors that define them. Reconciling all of this consistently, the semantic, the geometric, the dynamic, and physical, demands entirely new approaches. The dimensionality of representing a world is vastly more complex than that of a one-dimensional sequential signal-like language, which of course creates a whole set of new challenges. Some of the research topics at her world labs include developing a new universal task function for training, figuring out how to extract deeper spatial information from two-dimensional image or film-based training data, and creating new model architectures and representational learning. The payoffs, however, she argues, are immense. In addition to new superpowers around creativity and creating new types of immersive gaming or visual experiences, there are the implications for robotics, which she calls embodied intelligence in action. Even beyond those things, though, she argues that the real unlock for many use cases in science, healthcare, and education will come from this sort of spatial intelligence. For example, she writes, In healthcare, spatial intelligence will reshape everything from laboratory to bedside. AI can accelerate drug discovery by modeling molecular interactions in multi-dimensions, enhance diagnostics by helping radiologists spot patterns in medical imaging, and enable ambient monitoring systems that support patients and caregivers without replacing the human connection that healing requires. And I think the point of all of this is just a reminder that as locked as we are in this current paradigm of LLMs, there are other paths to advanced AI. And while some will view Jan LeCun's departure as the inevitable byproduct of personnel changes, I think Dr. Lee's essay reminds us that there are reasons that someone of LeCun's stature would want to go work on something different. If he does start a new world model-focused lab and gets billions of dollars, frankly, I think relative to a lot of the things that we're spending AIVC on, we could do a lot worse. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.